The season began, I think Boise State and Oregon viewed this game in very different ways than we do now. Now, this is a, an Oregon team that expects to compete for a national championship, and suddenly they find themselves in a little bit different position than maybe they thought coming into week two. It was a game in which they thought they could handle Idaho, and really they put up good numbers. The scoreboard just didn't reflect that, and now they're facing a Boise State team who've had a monster performance offensively in week one, and they are looking to thwart that upset bid by the Broncos. This is a Boise State team that features an absolute stud at running back who we'll dive into a little bit more later in the video. But this is an offense that is playing with a ton of confidence, and you saw that last week against Georgia Southern. 56 points, an absolute dominant performance by the rushing attack, but the defense obviously has some things to figure out. Now, Oregon only scored 24 points despite the level of offensive production they put up. That was very surprising. I don't think a lot of people expected that. And certainly not the game to be that close. It was a three-point game at one point. Idaho was feeling it. They were playing with a ton of confidence. And then the one last scoring drive for Oregon, it was like they just said, okay, we're, we're done messing around. Let's play. Uh, and I don't know if that's necessarily a, a good thing that you had to get to that point, but it is what it is. 1-0 obviously is better than starting 0-1 against an FCS team, but it's also a reason why Boise State fans think that they can win this game. Now, the line is Oregon by 19 points, and if what we saw last week plays into that this week, you're going to see that 19 is a, a probably not going to hit. You're going to get that under 19. Boise State is going to play with a ton of confidence. Now, believe it or not, Boise State leads this series 3 to nothing, and this was at a time when Oregon wasn't Oregon. And when I say that, I mean Boise State was going through its run in college football where they were a top 25 team, sometimes a top 10 team for a, a while. And that was really fun to watch. And that's when they played Oregon and had their success. They are looking to potentially get back to that point, and they are hoping to keep that zero in the loss column and add another one to the win column. The question, though, is can the defense produce enough stops? Yes, there is something to be said about what happened to Oregon last week and the struggles they had. But this is a Boise State defense that struggled to stop Georgia Southern. And you are going to face a different level of athlete for the Oregon Ducks offensively. You have guys like Evan Stewart that are tough to stop. You have certain running backs like Jordan James that are going to be difficult. And this is the defense in Boise State that has some players. But at the same time, they had those against Georgia Southern, and that didn't seem to matter. Now, you're facing a different offense with Oregon. You have a very good play caller in Will Stein, and I think that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for Boise State. Oregon, you have to wonder, how much does week one carry into this week? How much weight should we actually put on that performance? I think you still have to feel concerned about what Oregon did, or really more what they didn't do, and you have to wonder is that going to play a role in week two? And part of that is going to be how well they contain Ashton Genty. Now, this was a monster performance, 267 yards and six touchdowns. Absolutely insane. Um, I've been on the Ashton Genty bandwagon for a while now, and I think a lot of college football is finally starting to see what he's capable of doing, and we'll see what he can do at the next level. But right now, he's focused on making Oregon look ridiculous and Georgia Southern can attest to that that they know exactly what that feels like and they're not the only team Ashton Genty has been an absolute stud for a while and the Oregon Ducks slowing him down says a lot about their ability to win this football game and again Oregon is trying to bounce back after a tough start to their season you have a guy in Dylan Gabriel that hopes to be in the Heisman Trophy conversation according to Vegas is the Heisman Trophy favorite. I don't know how much that carries right now, but he did throw for 380 yards and two touchdowns. And it's just still so weird. When you look at the box score, and also this is why you don't just look in box scores, you pay attention to a lot of different things. The Oregon moved the ball with relative ease. It wasn't like they struggled to move the ball down the field. They were doing a lot of good things. It's just that they didn't put points on the board or they didn't put enough points on the board. That's got to change, and you're facing a Boise State team that has shown in just one week, granted, you again, you can't take too much in it, but you also know that they're capable of doing that. You at least have to respect that. You don't have to expect it, but you have to respect it, and 
I think that's going to be interesting to see how this team slows them down as well as putting up points of their own. I think Oregon fans expect more points. So you have so much talent when you have guys like Dylan Gabriel throwing the ball to Terrence Ferguson, Sean Holden, Evan Stewart. You have plenty of weapons that make last week's performance almost unacceptable. And the rushing attack, too. You have Noah Whittington, Jordan James. You have a number of players that make it really a head scratcher as to what happened last week. And I think that Dan Lanning is going to do a good job of getting his team to refocus and kind of flush last week and just move on to week two, because we are going to face a Boise state team that has a chip on their shoulder. They are going to come in with a ton of fire and they are going to be very passionate about their ability to hit Oregon in the mouth. And Oregon has to respond. That's where the defense comes in too. I think a guy like Justin Jacobs is someone to watch. Jeffrey Bassett could be one of those guys too. The linebackers, how they handle slowing down Ashton Genty says a lot about this game. It will dictate the outcome in my opinion. And if Genty is kept relatively in check, then you're going to see an Oregon team that wins comfortably. Jordan Birch in that defensive line also play a big role because while the rushing attack was good for Boise State, there were some things that needed to be worked on when it comes to the passing attack. Maddox Madsen was still getting comfortable. And I also think Boise State had some really explosive plays in the passing attack. So you have to find ways to slow that group down. And it all starts up front. Now, when you go to Boise State, Ashton Genty, how can you not talk about him in college football? Everybody's talking about him right now. Absolute stud player and someone who is headed towards the NFL and going to have a bright future. 20 carries, 267 yards, six touchdowns. Absolute stud. And honestly, so if you go back and watch, just watch the runs that he produced, yes, the 70-plus yard runs were really exciting, but there were a number of plays he made that were between the 10 to 20-yard range where he was making stiff arms, spin moves, doing everything. And I think that's great. I think long-term, one of the concerns that I have for Boise State is, are they going to wear him out? Yes, it was a great performance, and I don't want to damper the mood with that, but I would caution Boise State of how much they want to get him involved like that on a frequent basis. We know he's capable of it, and yes, you want to get him the ball as much as you can, but you also have to think long-term. If you're trying to make it to the college football playoff, you have to think long term. You have to find ways to keep him healthy. And we saw, you know, the backups and this offense produce some really exciting things outside of Genty. But I also know that we saw Genty cramp on his last touchdown run. Now it's just a cramp. That is what it is. But that's also an example of he's doing a lot of work. And part of that is just he found openings and he's that good. But you need to find ways in this game, especially against Oregon to get more people involved. And that's going to be really fun to see how they game plan for that. And what does this coaching staff do to adapt to this opponent? Maddox Madsen is going to play a big role as well. This quarterback is someone who surprised people when he won the starting job. And he is going to have to play a bigger role in this game. Week two is much tougher than week one. And he will be a big player in this game. Cam Camper surprised a lot of people. I thought that he could be a good player for Boise State, and I think this passing attack has plenty of options. Ham Camper showed last week that he can be one of those guys. And then the defense. The defense is going to have their hands full. I know last week Oregon only put up 24 points, but at the same time, they put up a ton of yards as well. So getting to the quarterback starts with guys up front. You have guys like Ahmed Hassanine that are going to play a big role. And also on the back end, you have a, a group of defensive backs that – or experienced, and you also have a guy in Jeremiah Irby that will be a valuable tool because he's played Oregon, he's seen some of these players before, and he knows what to expect. So getting him involved in the game plan and finding ways to help his teammates slow Oregon down, that's going to be a big key for them as well. Now, when it comes to picking the winner for this game, I think Oregon is going to win. I think that this is still a Oregon team that is an Oregon team that's much better. And I don't think that Boise State is initially a bad team. It's just that there are levels to this. And it feels like Oregon, despite their struggles in week one, is still a much better team. Now, I'm here for a potential upset bid. I would very much like that. But I'm also trying to be realistic. And I just don't know if Boise State has what it takes to shock Oregon in week two. 